Okay, so we're gonna start now. Um, just being given the go ahead. So um, we are gonna make salt canvas waxing. Um, so I will show you. This is what we're going for. Um, Baked this one this morning. Um, it's really like luxurious. I keep it at room temp. I never let it go in the fridge because it sets up really strangely. It completely changes the texture. So we're going to start by making our sweet pastry. So I've got my butter here. Um, sugar. I'm going to put in with our butter on a KitchenAid bowl. Um, if you have one. If not, then you can do it by hand. Um, it's more. It's going to be more of a kneading process than um, mixing, I guess. So we're just going to put that on the KitchenAid with a paddle attachment. For those of you that um, are just logging on, you will get emailed the recipe. Um, you should have already. So if you want to go to that, I won't go through the amounts. So I'm doing a slightly smaller recipe at the moment, so I don't want to confuse anyone. But you will have been emailed the recipe for this. So we're going to put all of our dry ingredients together. So you've got your sugar and your, uh, sorry, your sugar and your butter in the kitchen bowl. And then you want to put your flour, your corn flour, your salt in together. And then you've got one egg that I've already cracked there. I'm just going to turn this on. I, before I did this, and um, you could hear me pretty well over the KitchenAid, so if you can't, then I'll be everything after. Um, so we're just going to mix this so that it's combined. And as soon as that is, we will gradually add one egg, I'll just add the one egg. But if we're doing a large recipe, we'll gradually add them one egg at a time. This is quite a small, small recipe, I'm going to scrape the sides down just so that it can mix in properly. Ordinarily, if you're doing a large recipe, it should be okay. And then you're just going to gradually add all of your dry ingredients into this. Be really careful because this will kind of pop up and it's about to take um, so you can add it really nicely, so it's fully incorporating in. And we'll be looking at really far around. You just want to let that mix in a little bit before you add any more. And as soon as it looks like it's coming through the day, you can add a little bit more. Add the last of that in now. So it's really important to not overwork this. Um, you can knead it back on the bench if you need to, to incorporate it a little bit more. Um, take this off the machine now. So as you can see, it's not completely sort of worked. There's still a little bit of flour on the bottom, which is what you want. You want to slight, slowly work that in afterwards so that you're not over mixing it. It's not creamed. You don't want it to be creamed because that will cause when you're rolling it out, it'll cause it to crack a lot. Got a few people asking questions already. Um, so if you've just been logging in, um, we have just made the sweet paste. The recipe will be emailed to you. Um, if it hasn't already, then it will be very shortly. Um, sorry if it's difficult to hear me with the KitchenAid on. Um, so I'll go through this quickly once more, just because if anyone couldn't hear me. Um, so I've put my butter and my sugar combined those in the KitchenAid, then I've gradually added my eggs so they could slowly combine in and then slowly bit by bit added the flour as it was incorporating and then you've come with this kind of dough that's not over mixed, you don't want it to be like cream together because you want it to be as pliable as possible. So I'm just going to turn this out onto the bench now. It's really hot today, so this will be a little bit wetter than normal just because my butter is quite warm. But you just want to have like this little, did I hope you can see that, yeah. 
can get straight there. So you just want to have like a nice pliable kind of dough that's not too overworked. And it's not wet so that it will stick to your hands. It's just going to be quite easy to work with. And then we're just going to take on that and pop it in the fridge. Um, I usually, if I'm going to make a sauce caramel tart, I'll make the sweet paste the day before and let that rest in the fridge overnight. And then I will line my tart the next day, let that rest in the fridge and then bake the whole thing. Um, obviously we're on time scale right now. So I've made one already um, this morning that I'm gonna get from the fridge now. I'll put this one in the fridge. Um, just wrap it with cling film. Um, I'll grab some cling film back to not now. So just wrap that one up in cling film and then put it in the fridge. And I will grab my already rested dough. That's in the fridge now, and we can roll that one out. Okay, so this one's been resting in the fridge for, I think I made it about eight o'clock this morning, so for quite a few hours now, so it's completely cold, um, and it's very set. Um, just before the tutorial, um, I actually kneaded this a little bit myself just so I knew it was ready to go um, because it does set up quite a lot in the fridge. So you just want to give it almost like a soft warming with your hands um, just to make sure it's kind of workable. Still very kind of solid as far as the dough goes. Because actually when it's hot like this, you don't want to overwork it and it'd be too soft and then it falls apart, which might happen. And if it does, please don't judge me. <laughs> um, it's obviously a really hot day today. Uh, if you were to avoid that, I'd advise doing it either really late in the evening, which I mean it's Friday now, but when it cools off a little bit, or first thing in the morning when it's not, you know, the sun hasn't quite come out yet. So we're just going to roll this out. You want to get prepared beforehand. Uh, a line, so like a, uh, sorry, a tart ring. Um, you can do this any size, so I have like mini ones. Um, you can do those too, or you can do larger ones. I have the larger one even than this. Um, and then you just want to put baking parchment or a silver mat, uh, anything you have, it's kind of non-stick, uh, onto a tray and have that ready. So that as soon as you have your pastry rolled out, you can put it straight onto your ring. So I'm just gonna tilt this down a little bit more so you can see be working. So we're just going to roll this out. You want to be quite patient with this because if you try and roll it too quickly it's going to start to crack if it's still cold. So you want to be quite even. Make sure you have like a nice lightly floured work surface and kind of every few rolls, just move it around a little bit so you know that it's not sticking to the bottom. And you can dust it lightly on the top as well so that when you're rolling, it's not going to stick to your rolling pin. And if you need to add more flour to your surface, you can do. Um, this recipe is pretty forgiving, um, so we've almost put a little bit less flour than necessary in it because we know you're going to need to add a little bit more flour when you are working the dough. This is another reason um, why you wouldn't want to work the dough too much at the start when you're making it um, because the amount of work that you're putting into it now, you don't want it to be too much. Um, oh God, I'm trying to think of the right word. You don't want it to stress the dough out a bit much, I guess. So you want to roll this a little bigger than your ring. It's very important you get the thickness right too. Um, because you want it to be a nice, sort of even, thin tart case. But you don't want it to be so thin that it's going to break in the oven. As you can see, it's not super thin at the moment, but it's not thick either. Um, okay, so I'm going to roll this over my rolling pin. 
slide over my paired heart case. And then we're just gonna roll on top like that. So you want it to have kind of an overhang. And then you're just gonna lift the edges so that you can have a little bit of leeway to push into the corners of the inside, if that makes sense. Um, any questions, by the way, guys, I'm gonna to try to come back to them all at the end. It's because I'm kind of filming this and baking at the same time. It's a little bit complicated to try and answer your questions at the same time. If I see any pop up that are kind of relevant right now, I'll try and answer them as soon as possible. So you're just lifting up the sides to give you a little bit of room to kind of press the edges in because you want those corners to be nice and kind of refined, I guess. And just using your fingers really gently, but also kind of not being afraid of the dough. And then I have a little trick. A lot of people do this different ways. So they'll sometimes break off a little bit of dough and then wrap it in cling film to use it as a kind of press. Um, I didn't think that's necessary. So I kind of just tear off a little bit of the edge of the sweet paste, roll it up a little bit, dip it in a little bit of your excess flour that's still on the surface. And you use that to just press it into the corners so that you know that it's getting right into those edges. Sometimes it starts to stick. Again, just dab it into the excess flour again. And you just want to press all the way around. Be really careful if you have long nails for this, girls, because I have really short nails because I'm baking all the time, so it's hygienic, I guess. Um, but you want to be careful if you have nails because you'll cut into the side of the pastry. So just pull the way around, pressing it right into those corners so that it's nice and even and clean. And then just going around the ends, making sure the tops, so you want that overlap, you want to keep that overlap, you don't want to trim that off. So you want to make sure that's super tight to the top of the tin. The reason we keep the overlap is because when this is baking in the oven, the pastry is going to shrink ever so slightly. So to prevent your tart kind of being all wobbly on the top um, and it kind of breaking or anything like that, um, you want to have your overlap and then at the end, um, we're going to grade it down with either a microplane, um, but I know a lot of people don't have that at home, um, or just a serrated bread knife and we'll trim the ends off after baking so you know that you're going to have that really clean finish that you want on the top. So now this is lined. I think that you can probably see. So you've got right into those corners. You can see that the pastry is really even. You still have that overlap that's gonna stop you from getting covered in flour, which is absolutely what baking is about. <laughs> uh, so you still got that overlap that's gonna keep those sides from dropping down. If you have like a massive amount of overhang, you can trim it off with a little knife. You can just trim around the edges. Just make sure that you've got enough overhangs that it's going to secure that nice clean edge. And then any offcuts, make sure you keep them. I'm turn this back up again. Or something. Um, make sure you're keeping the offcuts because those are going to be great if you do get any breakages in the oven. You can patch them up when it's cooking and this will kind of save your ass when you're um, adding your custard because it doesn't leak. So I'm going to leave these over here. And then Initially, initially, didn't know what I was going for then, I was trying to sound intelligent, didn't work. <laughs> uh, but ordinarily, um, you would rest this for 30 minutes in the fridge minimum. You can leave it for longer, it doesn't matter. But minimum 30 minutes, just because you want that pastry to rest, um, which will prevent like even more shrinking in the oven. Um, so I'm going to pretend this is rest for 30 minutes just for your purposes. Um, so, first for 30 minutes, and then once it comes out, you want to line it with cling film. Um, so, I've got about three layers here, depending on the quality of the cling film. This is quite good quality. Um, you don't want it to break because it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Um, because baking beans, um, I use rice instead of baking beans, so it lasts forever, and it gets into all those cracks um, rather than you know, the baking beans are quite large. Um, you can get in the supermarket, so the rice really gets into all those corners. Um, 
So yeah, you don't want this cling film to break because the rice is a nightmare to clean up. <laughs> um, it's happened quite a few times to me. So about three layers of like your average quality cling film. Just press that into your chart case. I'll try this down again so you can see. And then the rice. So as you can see, I do quite a lot of times. <laughs> just gonna pour that. Don't cook with the rice after. I've not actually tried it before, but I can't imagine it would work very well. Um, I just keep this. So I like little couple bags of rice, just keep it in the cupboard so you've got them for your future tart purposes. Um, and you really want to overfill this so that when it's baking, your sides are being held up and they're not going to shrink down. Um, you really want to avoid your tart from shrinking down any way you possibly can. And you want to really press it in so that it's getting into all those corners, it's going to keep it nice and clean. And then you can just kind of tuck this over really loosely because if you do it too tight, then you're still going to have that gap um, in between the rice and the tart. So you want to do it really loosely so that there's nothing preventing it. Preventing the rice from doing its job, sorry. And then just press it in. And then you're going to put this in the oven. So this is rested in the fridge, hypothetically speaking, for 30 minutes. Um, and then we're going to put this in the oven. Uh, you want to bake it at 180 degrees um, on a fan oven uh, for about 40 minutes. This is very up and down. It changes every day. I don't know why. Um, I do the same thing every day and it changes every day. Um, ovens are unreliable. But um, yeah, so start with about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven, and then have a little check. These edges are going to start to get really golden. Um, which is great. And then as soon as those brown to the extent that you want them to, because it's very much personal preference. I like my tart cases quite dark. Um, a lot of people don't because they think it makes the pastry a little bit bitter, but it's kind of what I'm going for. So um, however dark you want the, the tart to be, as soon as that happens on the edges, you want to take this out of the oven and take the rice out and then put it back in because the inside of this is still going to be pretty raw in comparison to the golden edges. So you want to take the rice out and put it back in for about five minutes um, and then check it, see if it's there, whatever your, you know, color that you want it to be is. Um, and then you're good. Should be great. <laughs> if anything is cracked, you want to grab your suitcase that you've kept over from the side and you just want to get it down as thin as you possibly can and just patch those edges up, uh, patch those cracks up. Um, and then glaze the whole tart with egg yolk. Um, so you can use pasta or you can use fresh. I, I always use fresh because I have so many egg whites that I need to use. But I always have the yolks left over. Um, so glaze the whole thing with egg yolk and that seals in any little holes that you wouldn't like see to the naked eye. So nothing's going to leak out when it's baking. Back into the oven for a couple minutes, like literally for about two minutes. And you can put your temperature down so that it's ready for your custard um, because we sure open a door and stuff, it's gonna fall down anyway. Um, and the egg yolks don't need a high temperature at all, so that's not an issue. Um, and you wanna put your oven down at that point once the tart paste is baked to about 100 degrees. Um, I'm gonna pop this one in the fridge. Okay, so now that your sweet pastry is made, lined, and baked, you want to start with your salted caramel tart mix. Um, so I'm going to put this back over here. Let me just check your questions. 180 fan ovens, yes. Um, the corn flour we add just to stabilize the dough a little bit more. Um, any questions? And the butter was at room temperature, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to move you over here because we're going to go to the stove. This is going to be a little difficult for you to see, but I hope it's going to be okay. Um, so in these pans, we've got our double cream. Um, you should have the recipes already. 
Um, so you've got your double cream and your caster sugar already weighed out. I'm going to turn the double cream on to kind of a low, low to medium heat. Um, again, I'm doing quite a small recipe, so bear in mind um, you're going to want bigger pans and things like that. Um, always go bigger on the pans with this car uh, caramel tart recipe because it's going to kind of foam up quite a lot and can get a little bit dangerous, so just be aware. Um, and then got your egg yolks already separated and your dark brown sugar. Um, so I always use muscovado sugar for this. So I'm going to put this in here just because it gives it that nice kind of licorice taste. We'll mix that all in. So I've got my cream on low to medium heat. You want to make sure that's hot before you start to um, caramelize the sugar. Mix that brown sugar in there. So you just want that to be combined. And then we can turn our caster sugar on. So I've got just caster sugar by itself in the pan there. If you've got like a little Maurice or spatula or something like that. I've already kind of warmed this up before the tutorial, so it's quite ready. Um, so you're just going to heat this. It's going to start to kind of melt down and then it'll go a little bit golden. As soon as it starts to go golden, you know you're almost there. Um, as long as it's an even colour. And then we're going to start to add our cream really gradually. And that's the part that you want to be really careful with because as soon as the cream starts to get added, it's going to kind of poof up and be... That's kind of the most dangerous point. You just want to be really careful if there's any kids around or anything like that. Um, because the melting point of sugar is really high. Um, it gets quite smoky as well, as you can see. So you might want to put your extract pan on. I'm not going to put mine on because it's going to be really noisy. So the slower that you do this, the less this, it's going to get smoky. Um, so you want it on quite like, I'd start it on like a medium heat and try to speed up here because kind of a time frame for you guys on here. But low to medium heat, slowly warm your sugar up so then melts down. I'll show you when it's at the point of adding the cream just so you can see. I'm not sure if you can see inside of the pans. So just slowly melting down. You also want to have a um, like a strainer uh, ready over another bowl. So as soon as you've added your cream to the sugar, you're then going to pass, it's almost like a creme anglaise base um, in a kind of different order if you like. Um, so cream into sugar and then we're going to add that hot mix into the yolks with the dark muscovado and mix that together so it creates sort of custard. And then we're going to add salt to taste. Again, that's personal preference. Add less salt than you think is necessary um, because it will enhance the flavour once it's in the oven. And then we're going to pass it off to the strainer after we've added the salt. So we want to make sure the salt's nice and combined into the mix. And then we're going to pass it off so there's no lumps or anything like that. When you're making custard, you want to, always want to make sure that you pass it off. What question here, does the sugar ever crystallize if you stir it? It can do, absolutely can do. Um, you want to be really gentle with it, and really understand it. It kind of takes a lot of practice to know kind of what the sugar <laughs> feels like. Um, but you want to make sure it starts to melt before you start stirring it. Um, and then you can kind of avoid. So you can see here, it's getting quite dark. Um, so you want to slowly turn that right down on the heat. You want to keep it on the heat. Then you want to slowly add the cream and it will pop up. It'll kind of be a little bit scary for a second. Um, a lot of steam. That's a great sign. Slowly adding your cream. Again, this is quite a small recipe. Um, so I'm adding it all pretty quickly and together. If you're doing a bigger recipe, you want to add it very gradually um, because that will kind of explode up quite a lot. So I'm just going to turn that back here. So you want to mix it all in. It's almost like if you um, have ever emulsified chocolate, uh, cream into chocolate, it's kind of like that. You want to gradually add it because if you add it too fast, you get little lumps of sugar. 
So you can see that the camel's quite dark, but it's all going to cook down really nicely in that heart. So that's still quite hot. And um, we're going to just get rid of this morisco. You pour that into, you see that? Yeah. Pour that into your yolks and your dark sugar. Again, this is a really small recipe. Um, just because I don't need an awful lot of departments today. You want to make sure you scrape all of that out. So your oven should be kind of coming down to about 100 degrees now. Ooh, that was almost catastrophic. Um, so yeah, your oven should be coming down to 100 degrees now with your pre-cooked tart inside. Um, so you should be ready to go. That's all nicely mixed in together. Um, as I said, it's quite dark caramel. We're going to move back over here. So it's a little bit more manageable. And then we're going to add some salt to taste, which is over here. Um, I have made this recipe so many times I've had no idea like and don't like with regards to the salt flavouring. Um, so for this kind of recipe it's a really small pinch. Um, a lot of people like to go quite hard on the salt which is fine as well. Uh, again that's personal preference. Um, I always say add to taste because a lot of people don't like salt caramel too salty or want it salty so whatever you are vibing. So I'm just going to mix that in. Now we're going to get straight in. And um, we're just going to pass this off. Maybe got a little bit of a moment. Um, just pass that through. So your salt's added and it's like distributing itself through the mix. And then you just want to pass that off. So you can see the mix is quite thick. Um, if it is quite loose, don't panic. It, just because your mix probably wasn't quite as hot as mine was when it got passed over the egg yolks, which is fine because it will continue to cook in the oven as it is now. Just kind of speeding the process up. I'm just going to tap that out. And anything that's left in this oven, obviously discard. So I'm going to get rid of that now. Then you have yourself caramel spot mix. Now, once this has set, for a few minutes, you want to. This is going to take a few minutes now, so I don't want to kind of wait for it. But if it's still kind of going by the end of the video, then I'll show you um, what I mean. It'll have a little foam on the top, it kind of develops a foam on the top. You want to scrape that foam off with a spoon, um, kind of like clarifying butter or anything like that. Um, you want to get rid of that um, because that's how you get that nice glossy shine on the top. Um, and I do that a couple of times, so I'll skim it and then leave it for a couple more minutes and then skim again. Question. Can I show the texture? Uh, I think you mean the texture of the caramel, so I think you can see that. It's kind of loose, it's quite loose still, but at the same time it's thickened up a bit because you're heating the egg yolks. Um, but that will continue to cook on the top. Um, so then as soon as your baked tart is glazed and already in the oven, and you want to make sure that you leave that door open once it's coming down to 100 degrees so that you know that it's not too hot because otherwise your custard is going to curdle. Um, you want to pour this in, um, straight into the oven. Um, I find it much easier if you've got the tray in the oven ready and then you're pouring the mix in there because if you, want, if you have to move it, it gets a little bit messy. Um, so yeah, pour that in straight in the oven. Close the door and leave it in there. You want to give it about 30 minutes. Again, this is very hit and miss, it changes every day how long it takes because of if you're putting the custard in hot or if it's from the fridge and all kind of things like that. Um, so really keep an eye on it. I always start with about 30 minutes and then see how it goes to kind of up the time. Um, and you still want it to be quite wobbly when it comes out the oven. Um, I will post a video on my Instagram of how wobbly it is when it comes out the oven, but you can actually see you can see all this one, they still wobble quite a lot. So this one was baked this morning. 
Um, so here's the half. So you see it's like super shiny. That's because you've skimmed it so well. Um, and then you can cut when you cut through it. You want to use a hot knife, so you heat the knife up either with some hot water, make sure you dry it before you cut, so that the knife is nice and hot and you're going to get that clean cut. Um, or you can use a bow torch if you have one and just heat the knife gently. Um, so I'm using these um, for, I'm selling them to people in Bristol, so if this goes terribly wrong, then hit me up, look down those. <laughs> um, I will post any questions that I have left over on my Instagram page, uh, which is Hannah Catley, um, at Hannah Catley, with two H's on the end of Hannah. Um, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to message me. I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. Um, so when it comes out of the oven, don't put it in the fridge. A lot of people want to, to try and speed up. Don't do it. It really doesn't take a long time to set at all. Um, let's see, can you make the caramel and fridge it? Absolutely. Um, you can, I actually make a big batch of caramel, which is why I'm making such a small um, batch now, because I make a big batch, so I have enough for like a couple of days. Um, and then I'll keep it in the fridge and bring it out on temperature when I'm baking the actual tart pieces, so that it kind of is lukewarm, um, and then you can use that. Um, but yeah, that's what you put in the fridge. Next question is, How's the best way to store the finished chart? Uh, store it at room temp. Um, don't put it in the fridge. I always keep it in kind of like a little cake stand with a lid on or anything like that. Um, but just at room temperature for like two days. Um, yeah, otherwise it gets a bit weird in the fridge. I don't know why. Um, it just completely changes the texture and the flavor profile and everything. So, I think that's it for questions. Um, but yeah, you should get emailed the recipe and this will get posted up on, um, I'll try and share it on most social media platforms and on the Westminster um, YouTube channel. So, yeah, that was a lot quicker than the Sarah Day one. But I am um, doing another workshop, so if you enjoyed this one and you enjoyed the last one, then the next one is going to be a chocolate fondant workshop. It's going to be on the 18th of June and that one's going to be very hands-on and um, kind of like a cook along rather than step by steps that are already done. So that will be a very much a cook along. Um, so if you want to book onto that one, um, let me just see my questions. What size is the chart in? You can do whatever size you want. Um, I think that one's about 10 inch, um, but you can do whatever size tart you want. Um, obviously just watch the, the cooking times, um, but you can literally do whatever size you like. Um, also guys, if you are baking these in the future and you want to post up any photos on social media, please do tag um, me and the Westminster Instagram because um, I'd love to see them, it'd be awesome. Um, let me see, if you skim it, if you cover it, put it in the fridge. Yeah, so if you're gonna put the, the mix in the fridge, still skim it a couple of times before you put it in the fridge and then cover it with thin film to touch. Um, and that will get rid of any excess. Um, let me see. Do you ever make the variation with the chocolate layer on top? Is it similar to add this to us? I've tried this before. Okay, so someone's just asked the question of do I ever make um, kind of like a millionaire shortbread style tart with the caramel and the chocolate tart layer on the top? I've tried this before, it was a car crash. But I tried it again and it worked really well. Um, but use a set chocolate custard rather than a bake. So you don't want to double bake salted caramel because that was tragic. <laughs> um, but yeah, go for that because it's awesome. Um, okay, Caitlin has just asked, can I share a link to the equipment you use? Yeah, of course. Um, if you message me on social media, if you want to know what equipment I am using specifically, um, I can show you the links because I don't, I don't know where, I wouldn't know where to post it to be honest, if I was going to post it for everyone. But, um, let's see, is it the caster sugar on its own when you heat it? Yeah, so you just want to heat the caster sugar on its own. Make sure your double cream has already been heating and it's warm. And then get your caster sugar on to melt alone. And then in another bowl, you've got your yolks and your muscovado sugar ready and combined. 
<laughs> I think that answers the question. Um, awesome, thanks, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's everything, guys. So yeah, tag us on social media if you're taking any pictures. Um, my Instagram channel is Hannah Catley. Um, to H and the Empana. If you're in Bristol and want to order some bread or some pastries, then hit up Lockdown Loaves on Instagram or Facebook and send me an email. You're gonna love up now. Any tips on what to serve on the side? Whatever you want. Serve vanilla ice cream or creme glaze, whatever you feel like. Um, it's pretty good with everything. It's, it's my guilty pleasure. But yeah, I'm gonna sign off now, guys. This is awesome. Thank you so much. And please log on to the next one on the 18th of June.